Nepali uh, helicopters that have been searching uh, the area east of Kathmandu have apparently located the missing marine chopper. Now, this is information that is just coming in, so there's a lot of things that we don't know right now. We don't know the condition of the helicopter, or more importantly, we don't know the condition of the eight people on board, six U.S. Marines, two Nepali soldiers. It's still too soon. Uh, we know that police are heading in towards this area, the Nepali Army, uh, the armed police, all of these assets are trying to move towards Towards this location. It's about 35 kilometers or 21 miles east of Kathmandu. Uh, this is in the Dolka region, very hard hit uh, by the earthquake uh, northeast of Kalanchok. Now, we flew over this area yesterday. We actually flew past 35 kilometers and we went out uh, about 80 miles east uh, to the epicenter of the second earthquake that rocked Nepal earlier this week on Tuesday. This was uh, the area that the U.S. Marine helicopter was operating in. They were uh, delivering supplies, much needed supplies to people in that region who have been cut off uh, because landslides have closed off the main roads. And, and, and as it appears now, the helicopter uh, ha was heading back towards Kathmandu. We know that they had reported a fuel problem, uh, so they were heading back west towards the city and apparently went down again about 21 miles or 35 kilometers east of Kathmandu, Natalie. Uh, of course, so we're, we're, we're checking constantly to find out how the crew members uh, are doing, but we just don't know right now. It's very, very sad indeed, but at least um, it has been found. And as you said, it reported fuel problems. Was that the last communication with the helicopter, as far as we know, Will? As far as we know, that was the last communication, that there was a radio transmission that this, uh, that this helicopter was, did have some sort of a fuel issue, and then there has been nothing in the several days that uh, searchers have been looking for it. There was no emergency beacon detected. Uh, there, were, there were no phone calls from a satellite phone, no radio transmissions. Um, and so uh, all we now know is that this helicopter has been spotted. It's about 11,000 feet up. This is very rugged terrain, mountainous terrain. It's been very difficult even for the aerial searchers to get uh, to get a good eye, eye line on the ground sometimes because the weather conditions, the clouds are so low. But it was, in fact, a helicopter, a Nepali helicopter that has apparently spotted this plane, according to a brigadier general, uh, and now they're sending in forces on the ground to get there as quickly as they can. And we know that, as you said, you went up in a helicopter there, Will. Tell us more about just what you saw from your vantage point as far as um, the devastation. We followed the same route uh, when we flew yesterday that this U.S. Marine helicopter uh, was flying. They were they had a mission, and their mission was to deliver uh, relief. That's why the Americans came here to Nepal, along with so many other countries, uh, b because they're trying to help uh, the thousands of people, perhaps tens of thousands of people, who remain in, in very uh, dire uh, situations right now. Uh, there are some villages that we flew over where most of the buildings and homes uh, were destroyed, Natalie, and these are people who built their homes homes in many cases by hand there, there, there isn't insurance. There's not, there's not an easy way to recover from something like this. And we actually saw people standing on top of their crumbled homes, waving at our <coughs> helicopter, thinking that we were there to provide supplies and provide relief. It was truly <coughs> heartbreaking, and it gives you a sense of the scope of this. A and so the relief mission does continue, but it appears now the search mission, the search for this missing helicopter may be over.